In this tutorial, we learn how to transform entities inside the scene editor in Xenco Game Studio. Transforming an entity means that we either want to move, rotate or scale the entity. Let's select this crate that we have in the scene. We click on it and as you can see a gizmo appears. The editor will show you a different kind of gizmo depending on the last kind of transformation that you used. By default this is the translation gizmo. If we want to have a different translation mode we go to the top left of the editor window and click on the desired gizmo, for instance the rotation gizmo. We can also cycle between the different transformation gizmos by pressing the spacebar. Alternatively, we can also press W for translation, E for rotation and R for scaling. Let's go back to the translation gizmo. To start moving our object around the scene, hover your mouse over one of the arrows, holding down the left mouse button and starting to move the mouse around. The X axis is represented in this red arrow. The Y axis is the green arrow and the Z axis is the blue arrow. We can also move in two directions at the same time by selecting or by hovering over one of the edges or faces of the gizmo. It is important to note that Xenko uses the right handed coordinate system. This means that if we have a positive value for the Z axis it moves forward and a negative value will move it backwards. A positive value for the Y axis will move it upwards and a negative value will move it down. For the X axis if we give it a positive value it moves to the left and a negative value will move it to the right. So far we've been able to translate this selected entity with pinpoint accuracy. However, in some cases it's very useful if we snap the moving entity to a certain fixed unit. We can do this by activating this option right here, snap translations to this value. By default for the translation gizmo this is a value of 1. Once we have that selected and we start moving the entity, Notice how it snaps to a value of 1 every time we move it. Of course we can change this value to any value that we want. This is very useful in case you have prefabs and you want to start building a house or fences and you want to place them exactly one after another. The snapping that we have activated is only being applied for the translation gizmo. If, for instance, we would switch to the rotation gizmo, we actually have a different snapping tool right in the top editor part. We have to activate it again and as you can see the rotation snapping has been set to 22.5. Let's change this to 45 and if we would rotate our object right now, it would only rotate in degrees of 45. The same thing goes for the scaling gizmo. Again, this has its own snapping properties. By default, the scaling option has a value of 1.1. Now that we're at the scaling gizmo, let's look, let's have a look on how that one works. At the bottom, at the center of the gizmo, we can uniformly scale our entity across all three axes. We simply hold down the left mouse button again and we start dragging the mouse. Of course we can still use all the axes individually by hovering over them, holding down the left mouse button and simply dragging the mouse. This also brings us to the next couple of options that are really important. We have world coordinates, local coordinates and camera coordinates. What does that mean? When we have the scaling transform gizmo selected, then we can only use the local coordinates. What does that mean? It means that we can scale our entity only in the directions that our entity is facing towards to. The gizmo is being axis oriented to the direction of the selected entity. The options for world coordinates and camera coordinates are not available for the transformation gizmo. If we go back to the translation gizmo, we'll notice that the coordinates mode is still set to local. 
Again, we can see this by the way the gizmo is being aligned with the way the entity is rotated. This is very useful for if you want to move the entity along with its own orientation. If you don't want this, we simply switch to the world coordinates. This will display the gizmo always in the same rotation, no matter how your entity is rotated. Lastly, we also have the camera projection coordinates. What this does is that the gizmo is oriented in the same direction as the editor camera. This is useful if you simply want to translate your object in the way the camera is actually looking. We can change the size of the gizmo inside the editor by going to the top right of the scene editor window and clicking on grid and gizmo options. The first option you see here is a slider that determines the size of the gizmo in your scene. For this tutorial, as you can see, I've used a rather large gizmo. The other options in this window will be covered in later tutorials.